It is no secret that people my age are addicted to social media. As a 23-year-old woman who was on Instagram for 10 years and who recently went off of it, I'm going to tell you why that was the best decision I made in my life. I'm Julie Hartman, and this is Timeless. <laughs> Hey friends, welcome to Timeless, the show where I talk about timeless eternal subjects or I talk about timely subjects through a timeless eternal worldview. I hope that you all are having a great week. Just a reminder to please hit the subscribe button down below and follow me on social media at Julie R. Hartman. Now, you know from the title of this episode and from my introduction that I'm talking about why going off of social media was the best decision of my life. And then here I am publicizing my public social media. Well, I'm going to talk about why there is this seeming contradiction in duality, and I'm going to be very honest with you viewers about my real feelings about social media. I talk a lot on this show about philosophy and about history and sort of old time ideas. And today, of course, is a very timely topic, which is about our addiction to social media. According to YouSwitch, a British research site, Americans spend an aggregate of 57 days out of the 365 day year on social media. That is 15% of our year. That does not count the amount of time that we spend sleeping, which is, by the way, 33%. That doesn't even count the time that we spend on our laptops or watching TV. That is just social media alone. So that means if you add up social media and sleeping, 50% of our year is already gone. And again, as I said, we consume so many other forms of technology that just think about how much that adds up. So it raises the question, how much of our lives, what percentage are we really spending with other people or out in the world doing things that don't pertain to technology? Now this, uh, this statistic that I'm citing from YouSwitch is just a uh, average for Americans across all age groups in general. It is especially heightened, of course, for people my age, as I mentioned in the intro, I'm 23 years old. Some estimates say that we, people in my age cohort, that is 18 to 25, spend as much as 25% of our year on social media. For some who are particularly addicted, it can go up to 30%. Isn't that astonishing? 30% of your entire year, you are just staring at a screen looking at silly putty or looking at like memes that may be funny, but my gosh, we, I think, you know, we, we live in a society where we talk about social media a lot and how it impacts us, but I don't think we really take the time to process what a tragedy it is that we spend so much of our lives living this way. And one of the biggest reasons I think that we don't spend the time processing what a tragedy it is, is because this is a relatively new phenomenon. It was not even 20 years ago that Facebook was founded. Facebook was founded in 2004, Twitter in 2006, and Instagram in 2010. So Instagram is the most widely used app among people my age. So that means we've only had it for 13 years. We don't know really yet the effects of the app or social media. Of course, we're, we know it's sort of on a preliminary level, but can you imagine, I think 10 or 15 or 20 years down the line, we're going to look back and go, oh my gosh, how were we in this? And we didn't see how bad and all consuming it was. So this is a good transition to, I guess, a more personal part of the episode in which I'm going to tell you about my decision to go off of social media and also explain why at the same time I'm publicizing a social media. I actually went off of social media a few months ago on my 23rd birthday. And I think that date was especially important to me because I got Instagram on my 13th birthday. That was the, the age at which my parents allowed me to have it. And as I was approaching my 23rd birthday, I remember thinking, what in the past 10 years have I learned from being on Instagram? One, th like one fact or one something that has enriched my life. Can I think of one thing? And the answer was no. I literally could not think of a singular fact or component or something that I learned. Now, of course, there are arguments that social media is a good way to stay in touch with people. I'm going to get to that. Of course, anything in moderation is good. 
But that was really what impelled me to go off of it. That same day that I was having this thought about how I've learned nothing in 10 years from being on the app, I went to the dentist and my dentist was running about 10 minutes late. So I was just sitting in the in the waiting room and there was a People magazine right there, which we all know is sort of a smut, dirt and gossip magazine. You're not exactly learning anything uh, important by reading that. But still, as I was sitting there in the, on the couch reading People magazine, I realized that I learned more in those 10 minutes reading Bebel Magazine than I did in my entire 10 years on Instagram. Even if it is smut, dirt, and gossip, like I learned about some new movies that were coming out, I learned that the, uh, I guess maybe the Oscars or the Golden Globes had happened a week before, I was learning something that was valuable to me. What also impelled me to go off of it is that after college, I moved to Los Angeles in order to follow my dreams of becoming a big bad broadcasting host, whereas almost all of my friends after college moved to New York. And I just remember thinking during that time, I really think I should just go off of this because I don't wanna see all of my friends hanging out in New York without me. Now that I am over six months without a personal Instagram, I can tell you it is one of the best decisions I have ever made in my entire life. I actually, as I am talking to you, I am thinking this should be one of my biggest crusades as a young talk show host to get young people off of this app. I understand that there are some concerns about, well, how am I going to stay in touch with my friends? Or one of, one of, my, uh, one of the things that I contemplated too was, how am I going to stay in touch with people sort of on the periphery? I knew that I would be close with my best friends. We would call, we would text. But there were some like tangential, if that makes sense, people in my life with whom I wasn't particularly close but still sort of liked staying in touch with. And I wondered how I was going to do that. But now that I'm six months away from it, I just realized, you take the time to do it. You take the time to send a text. You take the time to make a phone call. It doesn't, you think that once you get rid of social media, all of those relationships are just going to go, the, go away. A, they don't. And B, the onus is upon you to strengthen those relationships. I can't even tell you how much richer my life is without that crap. I know I'm really kind of coming out hard here, but I, maybe for the first week it was sort of hard because I wanted my, my finger sort of like went to the place on my phone where that app was, but I spend so much time doing truly valuable things. I've gotten into reading, which I never thought I would be able to do on a high level. Those of you who watch my show know that I read all the time. I have long phone calls with friends. Even just like going on a walk and, and listen, even without a phone, that is just so much better for you and more life enriching than being on the app. It is really as, as corny and as perhaps dramatic it sounds, it really has changed my quality of life in, in several ways. And of course, I don't have the FOMO that I once had. I was always someone who didn't care as much as others about sort of social things, posting, but still any human being that is on an app and sees other people hanging out is going to feel a sense of want. And so just having that out of my life is so helpful. Now on to the elephant in the room. I encourage you at the beginning and the end of the show to follow me at Julia Hartman. Is that because I'm a hypocrite? Maybe. But no, I'm going to make the argument why it's not. I have to maintain a professional social media. It is the nature of my job. The way to reach people, I wish it weren't this way, is through social media. Otherwise, no one is going to know about my show. And it is a good thing in some ways, or social media in that category can be good. For instance, some of you know about sort of my story of finding conservatism and realizing that I had conservative instincts. That is because of the internet. That's because I went on the internet and found PragerU. And then I followed PragerU and I loved the kind of content they posted. And then from there I followed the Daily Wire and all of their conservative memes. And that played no small part in influencing the way that I think and influencing the trajectory of my life to this point. So anything in moderation can be good. And of course, professionally, we sort of live in this world now where you kind of have to, to go into it. But the thing that I try to do on my social media, and those of you who follow me know I, I don't post a lot, it's because I, I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm going to try to post more, is I really try to give content that is useful. I'm not gonna be you know, posting pictures of reacting to woke TikToks or you know, pictures of some random dog on the street. That I view as like brain deteriorating material. 
When you follow me, I am going to give you news, I'm going to give you some insight about life, maybe even something funny, but the whole point is I am really trying to gear my social media presence. If I'm asking you to follow me, I am going to be giving you stuff that will enrich you and help you learn instead of stuff that is just sludge and occupying space in your brain. I view though getting off of personal social media or at the very least reducing, significantly reducing the time you spend on it. I view that as an investment in one's future. Think about right now. Adults tell us, people my age, they say, you know, start investing your money, start saving your money, you know, don't drink alcohol too much, it's not good for your long term health, put on sunscreen, eat well. We're told in many other arenas the things that we can do that will, in the long term, benefit us. Why is social media not one of those, getting off of social media, why is that not one of those suggestions? That is arguably just as important as maintaining good, uh, a good exercise regimen and good eating. Again, as I said earlier in the show, imagine being 40 years old. We are all totally going to look back and go, why the heck did I waste some of my most precious, formative, fun years looking at videos literally of silly putty being pulled? That's right, all of you my age know exactly what I'm talking about. That stuff is so addicting. I remember being on my phone watching videos of silly putty. It's just, I mean, what are we, toddlers? And so getting off of it or reducing the time is such an investment in one's long-term future. And think about all of the things that we could be learning, the people we could be meeting if we just got rid of it. Now, I want to talk about two things that I have sort of noticed, or I guess the ways that social media has changed for young people. And I'd be very interested for those of you listening to hear if you agree with, with my analysis and some of your thoughts on it, you can write to me at julie at julie-hartman.com. When I was young, i.e. 13, 14, 15, there was sort of this in vogue social media uh, idea that each of your posts had to be very curated. Per, like the, the quality of the photos had to be super highbrow. A lot of people, especially girls, would do uh, white borders on their posts. They would be heavily edited and it would look like, you know those like cake, wedding cakes that are so like meticulously decorated? That's what everyone's social media looked like. It looked so intensely controlled and refined. And then I want to say around the time I was 16, 17, I've talked to so many people my age about this and all of us sort of remember when this turned. It literally flipped. The, the idea wasn't anymore to do curated, perfect, white border Instagram posts. It was to show that you don't care. It was to post photos of like, literally, I mean, I can think of so many pictures that people would post, like nonchalant photos. Photos of the, the dish of food that you just ate with your scraps on it and your fork and knife on the plate. I have seen people post photos of their dog pooping on the sidewalk. People post photos nowadays of themselves sitting on a toilet. They take mirror selfies of them on the toilet. People you know, will post a, a cigarette that they just had in an ashtray or their lipstick mark on a wine glass or honestly, I'm sorry if this is gross, but this is just the truth. Like people will post photos of like warts on their feet. Like it is that, <laughs> Sean, we got to get a camera for Sean. His, his face right now is hilarious. Yeah, exactly. And it, and it turned from showing that you don't care, that you are so authentic, you are so defiant that you're going to use this social media app to show a raw, real version of your life. But you know the irony about that? The people who are trying to give this perception that they don't care, care the most. If you are, by very definition, trying to show you don't care, that means that you care. These people literally spend all day thinking about what like weird sort of uh, alternative posts they could do. Like, ooh, should I do me sitting on a toilet today? Or should I do my dog pooping today? That is the definition of caring. So in a weird way, the earlier in vogue trend of Instagram with the curated posts, that was actually more authentic because it, no one was denying that they cared. 
every it, it was again it was sort of in vogue it was it was encouraged to care but now we live in this society where people are acting as if they don't care, but they really do. That's at least sort of the trend, and not for everyone, of course, but sort of more broadly the trend among people my age. Also, another interesting thing about the way that social media manifests for young people is, you know, one of the arguments for keeping a social media is that you can stay in touch with people. I actually think that's really only true for people maybe over the age of like 40 than it is for people in my age cohort. For instance, my mother is a social media and it's great for her. She can stay in touch with some of her friends from high school and college, some of her old bosses. That for, for people of that generation, social media can be very helpful with making those connections. For people in my age range, it's actually the opposite. It's a way for you not to stay in touch with people that matter to you. It's actually a way for you to stay in touch with people who don't matter to you. I, another component of me going off of Instagram was I looked at one day, I, I just went on my app and I looked at the stories on the top of my screen. I was like, these are people I haven't talked to in years. There, you know, I would be following people who I went to elementary school with who weren't my friends that I wouldn't talk to or someone that I was on the swim team with. And every day I would just like mindly click through their stories. Why do I care? They don't care about my life. I don't care about they li their lives. Why are we staying in touch with one another? So it's just so interesting that among people my age, it's just you, you think we're all feeding ourselves this load of crap that it's a way to stay in touch with friends. No, it's a way to stay in touch, honestly, with strangers. And a lot of people, when they follow people, they just want, they will literally follow strangers in order to have their follower count go high. Finally, we know that social media causes FOMO. For those who don't know that acronym, it's fear of missing out. We know that social media can cause body issues, especially for young women when people edit their photos or supermodels are posting on Instagram. It can have very uh, harmful effects for, for young women. We know that it can cause depression. I want to talk to you about three things that are not discussed, but are also effects of social media. Because we focus so much on the FOMO, the body dysmorphia, that's important, but here are some th three just quick things that I've also noticed. Number one, social media has sort of had this way of turning people into brands. I believe I've talked about this on the show before. Think about what the essence of a social media is. It's literally you, a page that is the essence of your life, the essence of your personality. Look at the concept of a bio. How can someone really, in a bio, capture the essence of who they are? You can't. And so what people do is they reduce themselves to maybe like a funny statement or uh, their, their profession. And then their whole Instagram or their whole social media is sort of a fulfillment of that brand that they have set up for themselves. I have seen people that want to give off the impression that they have a very luxurious life. So they'll post photos of them at a fancy restaurant or at a fancy resort. I also know people, apropos of the earlier conversation, who want to give the impression that they don't care and they're defiant and they're earthy. They're going to post photos of their dirty socks out in the wilderness after they went on a hike. I know people who want to come off as really artsy and will post photos of like the sunlight through the trees. But the point is, even if you are a luxurious living person, even if you are an earthy person or an artsy person, that's not the entire essence of who you are. We all hopefully are multifaceted people, but the problem is Instagram makes us into those brands because people keep posting the, the photos or the content that goes along with the prescribed brand that they have chosen for themselves. And, and so accordingly, social media has this way of reducing individuals into created personas instead of multifaceted people, which we should all hope to be. And this has sort of a uh, domino effect in our lives because then we start living this way as if we're these curated, branded people instead of seeking uh, sort of a diversity in the things that we're interested in, the essences of who we are. That's number one. We sort of turn into these brands. Number two, Instagram is has become, and by the way, I, I'm picking on Instagram because that was the app that I use the most, but this I'm sure is, is true of, of Twitter and Facebook. Social media is a way for you to escape from your life. 
for you to take an off the rack solution to living. I remember years ago, I mean, like a year ago right now when I would be thinking about things that made me uncomfortable. What am I going to do with my life? Am I having enough fun? Am I living the life that I wanna live? You know what comforted me and got me away from those thoughts? Pulling out social media and scrolling. It's a way for you to literally like click pause on your brain or click pause on your life and just sort of enter another universe where your attention is. And the more people do that, the more that you just are escaping making those decisions that eventually you do have to make. And finally, of course, this seems obvious, but it is not nearly talked about or really internalized enough. Social media gives a false sense of belonging. When you post a photo of you being with friends, think about like, did you really have fun with those friends? What is something that you took away from that dinner with friends? Were you really engaged? Or were the whole time you thinking, were the whole time you thinking about, you know, how is this post of food going to appear to other people? How, what is going to be my angle or my position when I take photos with these friends? In other words, you get this sense that you have this full life, but really, are you actually living and appreciating that full life? Or are you just trying to present it to other people? When we're all on our deathbeds, we're, we're going to look back and not think about what other people thought about our lives. We are going to be thinking what we thought about our lives. So let's choose that wisely, which segues into my final <laughs> send off that I always do. Remember that each of our thoughts, choices, and actions shape who we are. So let's think clearly, choose wisely, act with principle and determination, and get the hell off of social media. <laughs> Thanks everyone for joining me. See you soon.